Hi, I'm Ken Fellows, and I'm here at the Kittery Community Center's Morgan Gallery. Most of my life, I was a physician, but since I retired about 20 years ago, I've been painting in watercolors. There are so many talented artists in this area, I learned a lot from many of them, but particularly the late DeWitt Hardy, who taught me to be bold in composition and color, and Norman West, who taught me color theory, uh, how to understand it and how to use it. I really enjoy painting the sea coast of Maine, and so I'm here with this exhibit, which is called The Sea Coast from Portsmouth to Stonington. There are many things that endear the seacoast to me. One of the prime ones is I enjoy the juxtaposition of the land next to the sea. In addition, in my paintings, I love to see the proximity of nature with all of its randomness next to the architectural structure, which is straight lines and angles of the seaside shacks, wharfs, and houses. Another aspect of my painting that I particularly like is the clear main light. To paint the light, I need to depict accurately the shadows. So you will see shadows in much of my work. Speaking of shadows, in my professional life, I was a radiologist. And recently, one of my medical colleagues from long ago came up to me and said at one of my shows, well, I see you're still dealing in shadows. Well, why don't I take you on a tour of a few of my paintings in this show to show you or illustrate some of the things I've been talking about. This painting is entitled Old School, and it really is an old school that is in North Parsonfield in York County, Maine. The shadows and the contrasting tree colors were the attraction. In paintings, it's the shadows that create and define the light. Absent the shadows, there is only color to create interest. I call this painting Portsmouth Door. I like prowling the neighborhoods in and around Strawberry Bank. The architecture is fascinating. Even parts of buildings are interesting, like this door with its Christmas decorations. The shadows are subtle, but without them and the Christmas colors, it's just another front door. This painting is entitled Brave Boat Harbor. Like many artists, I seek out the light of the morning and late afternoon. Water is stillest at those times too, maximizing any reflections. In this case, the clouds overhead. Water reflections in paintings can be tricky. Overdone, they can be disorienting to viewers. One gallery watcher, after a first glance, asked me, if I had hung this painting upside down. This view of Brayboat Harbor is along Route 103 in Kittery Point, Maine. The painting is also a good example of distance perspective. What's nearest the viewer is made large and bold, and what's farther away, smaller and fainter, to fool the eye, like the stage set for a play. Wharf Shack is the title of this painting. Sometimes it's not just the object of the scene, here the old wooden shed that creates interest, but the viewpoint as well, here from under an adjacent wharf. If you take the day boat from New Harbor, Maine to Monhegan Island, on your departure, you'll see this same view. A lot of people have, who've seen it like this one particularly. This painting is Rope Garden. Monhegan Island in Maine 
with its idyllic light and quaint, quaint scenes, has attracted all levels of painters for over a century. I tried to find hidden, less painted, unfamiliar parts of the island, preferably those that tell a story. A good example is this fisherman's coiled line piled in his garden, as if he was growing both plants and rope. Watercolor painting usually requires a pencil underdrawing, which sometimes shows through to effect in the rope piles shown here. It fulfills another criterion for me because it tells a story. The title of this painting is Drying Gear. There are outdoor scenes I come upon, usually in early morning like this one, that feel like a still life just begging to be painted. And like any good still life, it tells a story or suggests one. This, a reflection of a lobsterman's care of the fishing gear upon which his livelihood depends. And I didn't have to edit out any garishly painted lobster buoys, a cliched subject I assiduously avoid. This painting is Fish House, a popular historic place to eat on Monhegan is the fish house. Specializing in fresh seafood dispensed under this sign, patrons dine on the adjacent Harborside Beach. This painting, entitled Monhegan Beach, is the place you take your food to eat from the fish house. Unlike most of my paintings, there's no shadows because it's a foggy day. Painting a foggy scene requires simulating what fog does. Objects nearest the viewer, like the picnic tables and the umbrellas, are clearly defined, while those more distant, like the boats in the water, become increasingly indistinct. This painting called Jamie's House illustrates my painting of fog also. Owned now by artist Jamie Wyeth, it's also known as the Kent House, after its original owner, the famous artist Rockwell Kent. So many great artists have painted and lived on Monhegan Island. The title of this painting is called Lupin House, and it's in Stonington, Maine. Stonington is my favorite place to paint. Its lobster boat harbor, the largest in Maine, has a special light that intensifies the natural beauty of its dramatic 19th century houses and architecture. It also has a quiet down east ambiance conducive to setting up to paint on any corner or in any yard without interruption or objection. To me, it's authentic Maine. What is more real Maine than the summer lupin around this Stonington Cape? The final painting in this tour is in town. It's also from Stonington. Even the smallest houses along the streets of Stonington display a uniqueness and charm, and I'm always tempted to paint them. Well, that's the end of our short tour. I want to thank the Kittery Community Center, a terrific resource for the citizens of this town, and particularly the Arts Committee of the Community Center for organizing and maintaining this Morgan Gallery. It's such a pleasure for me and the other many talented artists in this community to have a place in which to show our work. I again thank the committee and most of all I thank you for watching this video.